third speaker, uh, uh, Professor Roberto Orinchia. We will uh, discuss in the uh, topic of limits, guided back therapy in the cure of cancer, liquid treatment, and clinical uh, outcomes. In, uh, Professor Orinchia, we can learn. Okay, the same. <laughs> Roberto, is here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the professor of presentation of the University of Italy, scientific director of the European Institute of Oncology. Thank you, Mr. Ma Chairman. Thank you again uh, for the invitation. Yes, the fresh brachytherapy today, gynecological brachytherapy. But just uh, to add a comment, uh, to the previous uh, presentation. Uh, you, you see that I am also director of the, uh, in Italy, of the National Center of Hydron Therapy, that means proton and carbon ion therapy. And so the problem of the evidence uh, is, uh, is a daily problem for us and also with respect to, to the authorities, the health authorities, because it's very difficult to, uh, to be recognized uh, as a standard treatment, uh, not because it's not so expensive because uh, you consider that the uh, United States uh, is some time of tariffs, some time of reimbursement. Uh, in Italy, the cost of the proton therapy uh, courses uh, for carbon ion is uh, 24,000 euro. That is uh, 2.4 more with respect to the higher cost uh, of EMRT. So maybe it's not a factor of 10 more expensive. So. Uh, uh, and anyway, so uh, it is really a pity that uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really a pity that, uh, in spite of uh, really thousands and thousands of patients treated along 30 years with proton, there is a totally lack of uh, of uh, controlled randomized trial. This is a, is the major major question. So, for uh, for us, anyway, just uh, to conclude that in uh, cervical cancer, there is a very interesting experience in Japan. Uh, about the use of carbon ion, because especially in bulky tumor, the epoxic component uh, can be partially at least uh, solved or recovered uh, by using high lab particles. And so uh, in Chiba, they have treated more than 100 cases with carbon with a good, uh, good result. The problem is the reproducibility of Japanese uh, result that is uh, not so common. Anyway, just shifted to my, to my, to my talk. Uh, about uh, image-guided uh, brachytherapy. Uh, brachytherapy, as has been uh, already pointed out, uh, there is, uh, is very important uh, in gynecology, but uh, not only because uh, it's uh, really met the, the patient need because a precise, very precise uh, technique, high-targeted, individualized, uh, uh, high cancer cure rate, uh, low toxicity, is so well done, short, that is also important uh, today. And of course, uh, if you have an expertise in brachytherapy, you can use in uh, uh, several uh, different uh, uh, tumor, tumor types. In uh, gynecology cancer, can be used as a primary treatment or adjuvant treatment, as uh, you know, very as alternative treatment to surgery, if alone or combined it with external, in cervical, endometrial, vaginal, and valvular cancer, every subside of uh, gynecology apparatus, and also in adjuvant for patients with uh, high risk, and, and also may be suitable for the treatment of uh, some uh, selected recurrent uh, tumor. The, pr the general principle is uh, easy, uh, the use of uh, brachytherapy, especially in natural setting, uh, to give a boost dose uh, is a standard of care worldwide, waiting for the proton in the, for the future. Uh, uh, and you have to consider that uh, it's been reported in the literature that during the past decade, uh, when there is a push, uh, new technique, uh, new external beam technique, uh, there was a, a decrease in the use of uh, brachytherapy, and this, this has been associated with also a decrease in, uh, survival, in survival rate. So we kept attention on this. 
If you combine the best standard of uh, brachytherapy, you have to combine probably with the best standard of, uh, of external beam irradiation, that's the MRT. And this is the list uh, of uh, constraints that normally we use in Milano uh, when we uh, combine uh, the, 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 the treatment. As has been already mentioned, that uh, uh, <coughs> Quantec uh, is, a, is a very important in order to define the constraint of those uh, for uh, organ at risk. Different kind of uh, possibility, a feature of uh, brachytherapy about the placement, the duration, and the dose rate, etc. There are three co key components in realizing brachytherapy in clinical setting. The first uh, is a good treatment planning software. The second is a good after lower projector that may be high dose rate, pulse at the rate, or <coughs> low dose rate, pulse at the dose, and uh, low dose rate are equivalent in terms of uh, biological equivalence. And of course, uh, really important, and I point out this point, uh, the use of uh, a wide set uh, of uh, applicators. Uh, in order to deliver this uh, precision treatment, uh, you, have, uh, you start uh, from imaging, that is very important. Again, has been already mentioned, uh, the role of uh, different sophisticated imaging, PET, but uh, uh, today mainly MRI and, and for, for brachytherapy realization, uh, application insertion, optimizing the treatment plan, and of course, uh, the delivery of the dose. Along the history of uh, brachytherapy, we have an important uh, shift uh, in the past year, that is the, the shift uh, between the 2D vision, uh, we're using the fixed point, and uh, normally for those computations, the uh, Manchester method for uh, brachytherapy, for gynecological brachytherapy, and now we are shifting to 3D uh, conformal treatment that is based uh, on the appearance of the volume. So all the concepts in terms of, of uh, implantation, in terms of uh, those distribution are based really on the, on the volume. And this allows a, a very good uh, optimization according to uh, the imaging and according to the feature of uh, the patient. As I said, you, you, uh, some of you can, uh, can remind this kind uh, of uh, uh, rules for implant uh, dosimetry. We have a, a different uh, fixed point, the point famous, uh, point A, point B, the bladder point, uh, and uh, the rectal point. So that means that uh, we can use uh, still as reference and also to compare the result of the past with the current result, we can use probably uh, this kind of comparison, but uh, at least in our experience, we have to overcome this uh, fixed, uh, the fixed rule and to move to, as I said, three-dimensional volumetric uh, image guided uh, brachytherapy that uh, allow a real three-dimensional evaluation of the dose distribution and uh, also important in gynecological cancer in a critical organ at risk. This is list of the possible series uh, of advantages uh, in uh, using uh, image-guided brachytherapy. Uh, you have a get more accurate delineation of the growth disease, as I said, a 3D reconstruction of organ at risk, a better understanding of the three dose distribution, a better knowledge of the minimum tumor dose, this is important, this is not possible, we're using the fixed point, and the optimization, the sh really shaping the, the dose distribution, we have, of course, like in external beam irradiation, the possibility to, to evaluate uh, uh, different plan uh, using uh, DVH and uh, of course uh, you have also the potential to improve uh, the positioning of uh, the applicator. There is also uh, with respect to the implant uh, <coughs> there is uh, two advantages one is uh, to access the location, the right location, the, the position of uh, the applicator and also reduce uh, the risk uh, of uh, some possible uh, accident uh, in, uh, in, uh, during the implantation that is the uterine uh, perforation. Uh, the role uh, in, uh, in of MRI in, uh, in, uh, in 
gynecological cancer treatment and in bracket therapy is not uh, is not new, has been established several years ago. The first report at least 20 or 25 years ago. You can see here a very a nice comparison between the picture that you can obtain by the CT scan and the picture that you can obtain by uh, uh, MRI. The definition of the MRI is clearly uh, superior. Uh, the combination again of uh, tumor visibility on uh, MRI, the flexibility in dose planning, shift dose distribution from a standard uh, peer shape configuration to a sculptured peer uh, uh, configuration. It's very important also using uh, EG uh, <coughs> bracket therapy, image guided bracket therapy, to define exactly uh, the rule. Uh, gross tumor volume and clinical target volume delineation are very important, and also the European Society of Bracket Therapy in, in the frame of European Society of Radiation Code, the ESTRO, uh, define that the three different uh, uh, volume and high risk volume, in intermediate risk volume, and a low risk uh, volume. In this uh, working group, the results are published on the Green Journal. Uh, the definition of high risk CTV, that is where uh, the major risk of local recurrence because of the residual macroscopic disease that include the GTV at the time of bracket and then their cervix in case of cervical cancer, of course. The intent is to deliver a total dose of about uh, 80 to 90 to eradicate is the very high dose needed in case of, of uh, macroscopic uh, disease. Also, there is a definition on uh, intermediate uh, risk uh, uh, clinical target volume uh, is uh, initial macroscopic extent and <coughs> may be a residual microscopic disease. In this case, the dose that we have to give is less, is a suggested minimal dose is about uh, 60, that is considered appropriate to cure significant uh, uh, microscopic disease uh, in cervix cancer. And uh, at the end, there is uh, the low risk CTV, the larger uh, CTV that includes the only the potential microscopic tumor spread. In this case, uh, normally in case of combined treatment between external BV radiation and bracket therapy, this large volume is covered totally in terms of those uh, by the uh, part uh, uh, with the external beam uh, uh, irradiation. The dose should be optimized to the CTV with the goal of achieving uh, <coughs> dose 90, that means the dose of 90% of the CTV, more than 20% of the prescribed dose, and at the same time we have to minimize the dose to the organ at risk. It is very important uh, uh, to consider the dosimetry of uh, normal tissue and uh, organs and uh, uh, should be described uh, for all the critical organs around, like the bladder, the urethra, the rectum, the sigmoid column, etc. Uh, one special word about the applicators. Applicators are very important and uh, not only the machine, but uh, if you have uh, to, to use extensively uh, bracket therapy in, uh, in uh, gynecological cancer, but not only probably, you need to invest in a wide set of uh, applicators because uh, if you like to realize uh, personalized treatment, you need to have uh, more than a limited number of uh, applicators. But because the choice of the applicator selection should be based on patient anatomy and target volume uh, geometry. In, uh, in the field of uh, intracavitary uh, bracket therapy, uh, there are several options. As I said, I suggest to have more than one, the tandem and cylinder, tandem and the world, tandem and ring. So that means the tandem can be combined with different uh, situations is useful for uh, individualized uh, the treatment and also, of course, the use of personalized treatment by a mood. 
is an example of uh, tandem and combination between tandem and cylinder that normally in our use, in our experience, is reserved for cases with upper vaginal stenosis causing narrowing or for the case in, in which a superficial disease involving the lower vagina that is less than 5 millimeters thick. And you can see an example uh, so in MRI setting and uh, you can use also multi-channel uh, uh, this is the fixed position of, uh, of the patient with the use of the tandem and, uh, and uh, the cylinder. Uh, the tandem can be also combined with the ovoids, so this is one of the most classic uh, applications, and uh, in at least uh, our choice normally is in patients with a barrel-shaped cervix, and the suggestion is to use the largest ovoid that can be placed into the fornix should be a cervical flange is also normally available in this kind of applicator and is, uh, is uh, okay, it's not working, anyway on the, on the right corner, is, uh, is, is useful in order to prevent perforation uh, uh, and also to confirm the, the depth in which we have placed the, the, uh, the tunnel. This is some imaging of the placement uh, of uh, tandem with, uh, with the ovoid, is a more classic uh, implant, as, as I said. Tandem can be also combined with the ring, is uh, ideal for patients who have a shallow vaginal fornices. So you can see here the configuration of the application and also the, application, uh, the applicator placed uh, into, into the pelvis of the patient. Of course, uh, you can use the mood that uh, you allow to personalize the patient by patient, uh, the size, the shape of uh, the uh, vaginal uh, um, introitus, and uh, really it's important. Uh, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of our experience, we use uh, uh, a lot of, uh, this, uh, of this kind of applicator, personalized applicator, but as I said, if you have a wide range of other applicators, you can reduce the number of uh, personalized uh, applicators. That is, means also uh, uh, an increase of the work, uh, of the work uh, load uh, for, for, the, for the department. Uh, if uh, you have uh, the possibility, another uh, option is the use uh, in gynecological cancer of interstitial brachytherapy. Uh, according to our experience, may be useful in bulky lesion, in narrow vaginal apex, uh, in when there exists an inability to enter the cervical host, not allowing intracavitary, extension to the lateral parametria or the pelvic side wall, lower vaginal extension and recurrence of vaginal voltage in previously irradiated, uh, irradiated uh, patient. Uh, the inter interstitial brachytherapy in principle is more complex uh, with respect uh, to the endocavitary uh, brachytherapy, it's a multi-step uh, procedure and uh, of course uh, uh, need uh, to be done under general or spinal anesthesia and uh, if you are fractionate, if you use a fractionation schedule, it is better to place an epidural catheter for a post-operative pain uh, uh, management. Uh, Transabdominal on rectal ultrasound or MR, MRI may be used for the guidance during the placement of the needle. So this is a, a, another rule of uh, image you know, to realize the full realization of image guided. And also there are some reports, we have no experience on that, but anyway there are some reports in the literature in which the implant is guided by the use of uh, laparoscopic. Uh, this uh, what has been reported two years ago on, uh, on papers, a limited number of uh, patients, about uh, 30 patients, uh, with the use, uh, as I said, uh, under the implantation was performed uh, under laparoscopy. Uh, uh, laparoscopy. Uh, another, another paper on the same, uh, on the same year, which has been uh, reported in uh, <coughs> this way, very, very good result. Uh, but uh, anyway, there are no comparison uh, between the different uh, image-guided uh, uh, approach. <coughs> Normally, 
if, uh, if you have to compare the use of interstitial or intracavitary bracket therapy with the use of interstitial technique can deliver higher dose to the paravaginal tissue while giving a lower dose to the rectum posteriorly and the bladder anteriorly. You, have, you see the comparison between the two. Of course, if you use a cylinder, you have more fixed dose. If you use an implant, you can you can really personalize uh, uh, the treatment like uh, in other situations. The most used uh, applicators, no, I'm for it. Okay. The most used applicator for interstitial treatment, at least uh, in our institute, is the, the MAPIT, uh, the Martinez uh, from Detroit. And uh, you can see here that the needles uh, are placed uh, and separated with the aid of template, which also helps to assure adequate separation uh, between, uh, between the catheters. And also there are also two uh, additional uh, cylinders that are uh, placed in the rectum and in vagina in order uh, to uh, provide a better template uh, uh, stability. So to have to realize uh, really a good fixation of, uh, of the implant because uh, seem no, but uh, also this part of the body move uh, during uh, the operation. This is final configuration after the placement and this is the set uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, the device that uh, we, we use in uh, realizing this uh, interstitial uh, implant. It's, it's very interesting that, that this feature of uh, the uh, MOPIT uh, applicator, so in the, in, the, in, the, in the external part you have the possibility to use angle uh, uh, implantation and this is maybe used in order to cover uh, better the target especially in the parametrial uh, uh, space. You also, if you are more sophisticated in, uh, in bracket therapy, you can combine uh, the treatment and uh, use uh, uh, both, uh, the, for example, the tandem and ring in this case, or robots, with an interstitial needle. And uh, um, needle normally are combined and are used to shape, fine tune, and enlarge the treated volume, like uh, reported. So it means that if you are not able to cover all the target with the minimal uh, dose, you can have uh, 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 those additional dose uh, putting uh, uh, one, two, three, what, what you need, uh, needles, and to, to, combine, uh, to combine the treatment. And this is an example of uh, the Europe uh, in, uh, in Netherlands, in Utrecht. There is a huge experience also in uh, uh, MRI-guided uh, implantation and uh, the very sophisticated uh, uh, work uh, on, on that. Just to conclude, some words about the comparison between the use of low dose rate or pass dose rate uh, uh, versus high dose rate brachytherapy. Seems that uh, in the most report from the literature, there are no uh, evidence of uh, one of the superior uh, to the other. So the decision is, uh, is uh, for example, for us, uh, we use. Uh, Passive machine, we have two passive machine, and we use for more complex implant with the patient uh, that stay in the hospital for some days, and we use normally high dose rate in gynecological cancer for easier or less complex uh, 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 implantation in which uh, we can repeat that the patient can uh, stay outside of uh, the hospital. Seems also that in terms of acute side effect, there are no difference between high dose rate and low or passive dose rate. And also in the terms of late side effect, you can see here a list of possible uh, uh, delayed effect and the recommendation for the patient is also the vaginal delay. <coughs> Dilation, uh, uh, dilatation, you know, as needed to maintain a vaginal growth site and a sexual uh, function. In conclusion, we can say that the delivery of image guided brachytherapy increased the complexity of cervical uh, or gynecological brachytherapy, both from a clinical point of planning and delivery and from a logistical point of getting access and availability. This uh, will have an effect on uh, working partners of the department and also on the team involved, but uh, several dosimetry papers and also our own experience show that uh, image-guided brachytherapy can allow 
better dose optimization to improve the target volume coverage and to reduce the dose to the organ at risk. This is particularly important for bulky tumor that uh, in which uh, improved target coverage uh, uh, may cause uh, uh, higher risk to, to, to the organs. So if you look uh, in the historical data uh, in, uh, in the use uh, uh, brachytherapy in uh, uh, two uh, dimensional manner with the use of fixed point, you can see that we have very good results in case of early disease and we have quite good results from 50 to 85 percent depending on the stage in more advanced disease. Today, with the use of uh, <coughs> image guided, seems that uh, increasing the dose, uh, the rate uh, of local control in uh, uh, also advanced case is higher, 90% uh, of uh, more, and uh, probably further escalation of the dose uh, can be allowed. The future trend uh, should focus on combining advanced EMRT and advanced image-guided brachytherapy by using the inner advantage of both the option to fully exploit the potential of advanced radiation therapy. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you, Professor Regia, for this elegant presentation. And the floor is now open for one or two questions. Professor Shem. Easy question. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for this elegant presentation. I want to ask about the dosimetric calculation when we combine both uh, intrauterine tendon and the void plus interstitial brachycerum. Is it easy or it will be complicated? Uh, Ask about combining the interstitial brachycerum with intrauterine tendon and the void. The dosimetric calculation will be sophisticated or... No, 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 no. Uh, you, you can, uh, uh, if, if you have a... Uh, Obviously, the right uh, uh, treatment planning system, uh, you can run an additional plan. So it is constructed in the same time and uh, keeping account of both the contributions. So you, have, you can have separate plans, but also you can have the total sum of, uh, of, uh, of the dose distribution without, uh, without problem and also in, uh, in not so long time. Insertion and they get forced to the insertion. What is the logistics of the center? In case of, uh, uh, you are speaking about uh, uh, endovaginal. Uh, this is the uh, image guide bracket Yeah. So doing two insertion, it negates the advantage of high dose rate because the applicator is there for 24 hours or so. Yes, as I said, uh, uh, because we, we are still linked to, to low dose rates, so it's probably due to my age. But, uh, <laughs> and in, in, if we, normally we use high dose rate mainly for uh, only simple vaginal. In the, other, in the other case, we use pulses, so that means the patient stay in the bed for three days. Thank you very much.